attention on your physical body. Just sit comfortably, feet straight on the ground, palms up in your lap. taking you deeper within yourself. Your body, your mind. 
connect with this highest aspect of your spirit that is always in communion with your Creator, God the Omnipotent, Omnipresent, Omniscient, that is within each one of us. Consciousness is within you while you are in this physical plane, in this physical reality, in your physical body. Awaken to that perfection that is within you. Awaken to the power of God that works through you. And embrace God's will be done on earth in this physical reality. 
about it as it is in the heavens, in the higher dimensions of the universe. Let God's will be done. As above, so below. Embrace this truth. And create heaven. your imagination, with your intention, create heaven on earth. Feel the vibrations from your higher self. Coming down to the crown of your head. Further down to your physical body. Down to your feet. And see an ankle. yourself surrounded with beautiful golden light. You are projecting light The more light you project, the more light you attract. The more love you give, the more love the light of God that never fails, and you are the love of God that never ends. Embrace yourself.
on July 29th when my department was dissolved, leaving me amongst the unemployed, or newly termed, re-employed. After a few days of the adjustment, my husband suggested that we take a cross-country trip. Now this would never have been possible if I was still working, and this was a life dream for both of us. And this was an awesome opportunity for me to disengage from the political garbage that I've been prevalent in within my work life. Traveling always provides opportunities for new perspectives in life. Pastor Steve referenced last week that I went on a walkabout. Our journey entailed 11 states, 22 days, and 6,000 miles. I'm happy to report that we didn't walk. <laughs> and took my SUV, lovingly nicknamed the Traveling Truck. And this was our first big journey with the traveling truck. We had a basic plan of where we wanted to go and scheduled places to stop with a few dear friends who decided to open their homes to us. It was time to pack the suitcase. What does one bring when you're planning an extended journey and much of it's unknown? One, <coughs> bring, oh excuse me, um, I packed clothes, we knew we were going to need clothes, all types. I planned to do laundry, one bag. My husband, he packed for a year. <laughs> I couldn't believe how much my husband packed. And now mind you, my husband irons. So everything was meticulously pressed that he packed. <laughs> We might need some automotive tools, food, water, a cooler, personal items, first aid kit, flashlight, and I brought camping gear, just in case. Um, we're plan when planning the journey, it's hard to anticipate what you will encounter and therefore be prepared for all your needs ahead of time. This is true in aspects of all of our daily lives, is it not? When we plan to go forth into the unknown each and every day, we never truly know what's before us. We began our trip with heading northwest and stayed just outside of Memphis for a couple of nights. Memphis is a beautiful community with very deep historic roots that follow a beat of their own drum. That would be rhythm and blues. We had to sample a bit of the barbecue, which was delightful. We were there during Elvis week, so everywhere we turned, there was another man in white with long sideburns serenading somewhere along the line. And I have to tell you, the entire trip, Elvis went with us. <laughs> I don't care what state we were in, Elvis was there. <laughs> we stayed in Tunica which had been a dream built by many millions of dollars to create an oasis filled with glory, glitz, and gambling, only to find that the dreams were bigger than reality, and therefore it was closing down all around them. The big casino was closed, the outlet malls were barely surviving, the kids' zone was deserted, and a few folks visiting is what remained. I met a woman she was wandering about. She felt stuck in her life. Just a lost soul. Words came from spirit. I love that. When you open your mouth and God comes out. Well, it's up to you. And only you can choose what changes you can make in your life. But that requires faith. It requires a desire. And it requires action. Our next spring, or excuse me, our next stop was Hot Springs, Arkansas. We traveled many miles to get there along small roads all through Alabama, Mississippi, and Arkansas. These states are part of the American breadbasket. As far as the eye could see, our crops, different kinds of corn, beans, potatoes, sunflowers, fields, as far as your eye could see. Each was carefully planted. Irrigation was carefully manipulated to provide ultimate growth of these different products. 
Each of these families, farmers and fields, are providing sustenance for us, you and I. What would we do as people and a culture without the security? It's a question. I had a blast mining for crystals in Arkansas. <laughs> I think I found something. Thank you, guys. Um, I had a blast mining for crystals in Arkansas. There's something so excited about unearthing a gem that has been hidden for literally millions of years. So funny. I was literally standing on a rock that a man below me picked up and turned over and he said, oh, well this one's worth three or four hundred dollars. <laughs> and it was right there. It's all about which way you look at something. Taking the time to turn it over to truly see the hidden value, isn't it? It's a very poignant thought for each of us. We then were off. <laughs> um, we then were off to Oklahoma. I have strong Native American roots. And the last time I drove through Elko Oklahoma, it felt really, really familiar. I was excited to visit there once again. We planned to stop at two Native American cultural centers. Uh, I, I can't tell. Sorry, God. God's got the rebirth going on here today. <laughs> um, the first visit was to five civilized tribes museum and the Cherokee National Museum. The museums were lovely, but the Cherokee Museum was filled with different artifacts, stories, and living culture. They had a real-life depiction of the Trail of Tears. It was so horrifically moving to be a part of that, to see the people who were torn from their homes, some in the middle of the night, with nearly nothing. And they had to leave their lands with just their families to march along this trail. So many thousands of miles they had to go. It wasn't for the weak. It wasn't for the sick. Those people, they were left along the way. Some of the babies, they were left in tree stumps. Some of the elderly folks with just a blanket over them. The people who went and had and really tried to argue this along the way, they were just shot because it isn't against the law to kill an Indian. That's all you are, just Indians. The people who actually made it, 25%. They left with nothing, and they, they got there with so much less. Only their horrific memories to start a new life. But what kind of a life was that really going to be? It's a question was also a replica village of the 1710 Cherokee village, also known as the Dilgwa, an outdoor living exhibit to take visitors back to the early Cherokee days when things were going well. You could go to the different stations, residential sites, there were 14 in all, and they demonstrated the range of cultural practices such as stickball, basket making, flip napping, and blow gun making. The exhibit features a summer house, a winter house, corn crib, kitchen garden, and a council house. Two recreation areas showcase Cherokee games from centuries ago that are still being played today. We went through Colorado, and Colorado was so beautiful in so many ways. I felt patriotic when I was visiting the USA Olympic Training Center. So small when I saw the cave of winds and we were thousands of feet in the air looking into those very deep gorges. We journeyed to the top of the Rocky Mountain, Pikes Peak. We got on a cog train. It was 95 degrees when we got on. We got to the top 7,000 feet later 
and got off the train and it was snowing. <laughs> it is all about perspective. It was only just up the hill, was it not? But what a different place I was standing. Besides the fact that the air was so thin and I could hardly breathe. And things became dizzy. <laughs> Dizzier than usual. <laughs> but it's all about where you are. You hop back on the cog train down the hill, and there you are, back to something familiar, back to a place that felt more um, in line with where I was and what my body was accustomed to. The journey was just amazing in so many ways. America is truly, stunningly, so full of color. Culture, creative artworks, mountains, valleys, lakes, prairies, rocklands, deserts, forests, mesas, and mankind. The topography was outstanding to go from the top of Pikes Peak and a mesa to the valley of a gorge to just journey around the bend and to see an entirely different perspective. It was amazing to see when you crossed a state line how the topography would change, almost like it knew exactly where the line was. We saw wildlife everywhere. Amazing to see wild antelope coming down and blending with the cows at sunset to graze upon the grasslands. Birds of all kinds decorate the skylines. Passing through the Navajo lands was beautiful. And when we looked up on the top of a mesa, far in the distance, to see what we really identified as a bear. Bear followed me throughout this trip. I needed strength and courage at this time in my life. And the protection was there. So Bear was with us on this journey. Driving along the bottom of Colorado was a stunningly beautiful journey of color, texture, and adventure all at once. The Rockies and other mountain ranges were ama amazing. The deserts, they have a beauty all of their own. They're called the painted deserts and areas as the color variations are incredible. All layered, red, green, gold, tan, yellow, white, every color imaginable all highlighted against the blue and the white skyline. Cactus, sage, and scrub shrubs add texture and intrigue to the lands. Within the lands, we saw cattle, horses, longhorn cattle, donkeys, llama, prairie dogs, sheep, buffalo, coyote, snake, and again, so many birds that danced across the sky. Seeing the wild horse on top of Mesa Verde was a moment my heart will never forget. Traveling up the Mesa Verde through the switchback turns, back and forth, back and forth, 20 miles. You seemed like you were going so slow, and then you would come around a bend, and there would be the most magnificent vista you could ever possibly imagine. But then you would look to your side and you would see the cliff. It was there, ever impending, as it is in all of our lives. Walk carefully. It was interesting to see so many of the kivas along the native reservations. A kiva is a wooden or stone or mud hut. It's a rounded building built by natives, it's for their sacred time, for their special ceremonies. It's where the old magic blends with the new. You could see old ones and you could see new ones because the heritage was being carried forward. Mother Earth holds so many colors and variations as the dirt is laid out and churned for development. In some areas, they were mining and taking great chunks of her carrying her away. In other areas, they actually moved mountains, mining for gold. It's unbelievable to see the labor involved 
and massive land changes that are made through this process. But her lands were all colors of the rainbow, showcased as far as the eye could see. Energy was very interesting to also monitor. The solar use was limited, but we saw fields of windmill farms, and each one is truly enormous. We passed three semi-trucks with one of the face blades each. Wow. Because a face blade is between 80 and 100 feet long. I hope they don't die. <laughs> You're in the right place. <laughs> well, this warranted a bit of research because we needed to know as we were going forward. Each one of those large windmills cost $1.4 million. They can actually provide enough energy for four to five hundred homes in a year. Just a fact. Oil was being pumped from many states, mostly Texas, and the pumps were bobbing up and down like a bird pecking its food in the morning. We noted that oftentimes the refineries for all that oil, they were located in the native reservations. I'm sure because there's a lot less regulations along those lines. The actual electric plants in the older communities, they were monstrosities of late. And in the center of the downtown, smoking and choking out a charming view. For our urban convenience, we are a people of reliance on energy and we have many options in our country. Who's taking the time and interest to decide for the rest of us and the quality of our lives? Another question. History was prevalent everywhere. Old communities founded in the 1700s, such as Albuquerque, that has grown into large cities, but they worked to preserve their historic roots with a community square. This is a square where the community gathers to become a community. This is where they come to be as one. So many towns, dirt roads, wooden and brick buildings proudly standing as a tribute of the past that are still waiting to be restored and preserved once again. This is a true challenge and a cost to save and preserve as compared to building a new one. The second is less expensive but what is the true cost of preserving our heritage? Another question to ponder. For me, I think the mountains and the rocks had the most to say. Quietly standing their ground, majestically being just where and who they are. They're each unique and have many hidden facets that all make a lasting impression for those who see and experience it, along with those to learn from them too. Rocks are hard. They absorb light for warmth and can let the winds of sand blow by without changes to them. They provide stability, security, strength, and beauty, along with so many different views, depending on where and how you look at them or stand upon your surface. All is there and the quiet strength is the ultimate key. To listen and not speak and to learn and then to take action. Let the seasons change around each of you. You do not need to become part of the chaos, but can stand back and let it blow by you. You do not need to be in that space at all. You can just choose to be in that sunlight. The rocks stand for centuries against all time, weather, and odds to be just as they are, filled with the knowledge, the strength, and the beauty. Some smooth, other jagged, and still others are made of lava, heated to a point of melting into an entirely new formation. Is that not what stress can do to each of us? What changes in our life? 
The next time that you see a rock or a stone, pick it up. Listen to it. See and hear the truth from our Creator as we are all but the same, are we not? We saw the mountains in New Mexico, the Rockies in Colorado, and the Red Rocks of Sedona. Man was interesting to watch, too. So many people all involved in their own lives, scurrying about to and from work, school activities, and other vacationers. Some very happy with their lives, as others are lost in drugs and downtrodden. People are funny. Some working so hard to be seen and noticed and highlighted as the so many political signs along the roadways, all proclaiming that they're the best. Other people, they meld into the background. They hang their heads, wanting to disappear from existence. And then there are just so many others everywhere else along the spectrum. It is always so much fun to people watch a very entertaining and interesting way of learning about where you are. The culture of a community and mankind. The people in Mississippi, I found them to be the friendliest. Dallas, that was the largest city. So hard to get around. <laughs> Man is the same everywhere you go. But it's up to each of you to decide what kind of a man or woman you want to be. Preconceived notions of locations were just that. An idea of what might be usually didn't show itself for what it truly was. Things that you thought were insignificant turned out to be the most amazing sights of all. The same is true in each of our daily lives as we are open to see and experience it. We traveled through a horrific rainstorm in Texas along the flatlands. There's nothing out here. The winds were coming. The rains were pelting us. Hailstones hit the car. There was a semi blown over on the side of the roadway. The roads were lined with blinking flashing lights. But what does one do? It's a good question. Do you continue to just stop and be there? Do you wait for it to pass? Or do you slowly work your way along? We chose the latter. We worked our way along. The winds came the other direction. And we finally cleared ourselves. It's a storm. Don't we all face storms in life? The Grand Canyon is just that, so very amazing and incomparable. That is the truly impossible thing to describe. How can one say what is seen when even your eyes can't absorb and comprehend the depth and the beauty of what you're looking at? It's not just a canyon. It's the sky, the clouds, the shadows, the birds, the stars that all dance upon the horizon, making it so majestic. A place where there's no limits, the unlimited possibilities for dreams to come true. The only limit is the one that we place upon each of ourselves and our minds. We finished our journey in New Orleans, where a man worked so hard to create land to live on. Water was just everywhere and bridges made for tens of miles so that they could even navigate to get from one place to another. A city of so much diversity and so many seeking acceptance for their unique qualities. An adult party zone for all times and an interesting view for sure. Some folks. <laughs> would come to just observe, and others, they were landmarks of the city. Traveling is amazing and can be done at any time. The next time you look to limit yourself, don't. Open yourself up to the unknown and jump in with your heart and soul to do and to be as you have dreamed. So often, we live in the future, keeping our lives on hold for what will be. 
what will be is today. Our future is this moment. Every day and everywhere that you travel, there are lessons in life to be seen, to be heard, to be experienced. You all have your suitcases packed. With what you believe you think you're going to need to get through this day, and for the journey that you have in your life. Remember, you can always add to that suitcase. You can take things out of that suitcase. Maybe it's time for a new suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I'm not sure what tomorrow will bring, but I do know one thing for certain. I'm walking the path that God has set before me. I plan time to listen each and every day. I have faith to follow his guidance, even when I don't understand the purpose. I may forget or not know what to put in my suitcase, but I do know that if I need it, it will be provided to me. So for this day, go forth and be all that you can be. Do what your heart is leading you to do. Be joyful. Live in the joy of life. Love as you want to be loved. And dance to the music of life. And let the winds of Mother Earth create that melody for you. Thank you.